Okay, let's go back to what we just read, verse 1. There is an end of days, third temple that stands in Jerusalem. Third temple. I want you to think about that. And John said he was given a reed like a measuring rod, and the angel stood and told him, the first temple is Solomon's temple. You can see that. That's a Sunday school illustration out of a children's storybook of Solomon's temple. Then you've got Herod's temple, which is only an enlargement of Zerubbabel's, but it is called the second temple. In archaeology, the current archaeological climate, they call that thing, Herod's temple, the second temple period. It starts with the return of the exiles, Zerubbabel, you read about that, you know, in Haggai and all the, you know, Ezra and Nehemiah's building the wall around it. That's the second temple that is destroyed by Titus, uh, Vespasian's son, and Domitian's his brother, uh, Titus' brother. So it's kind of a three-member family that's against the Jewish people. Here's what the Bible says. There's a future Jewish temple, future to us right now, future to when it was written in AD 95. It's in Jerusalem, and Daniel saw it. Daniel? Daniel appears to be Jesus' favorite uh, Old Testament prophetic prophet because he's the only one Jesus quotes by name. And he says, Daniel sees this temple and he sees the abomination that brings desolation. That's another name for the Antichrist, the abomination that brings desolation. But in Daniel 9.27, Daniel adds this insight. They're offering sacrifices and offerings. Did you know this is Passover week? Do all of you know that for the Jewish people? This is Passover week, right? You all know that if you look at the calendar. Did you know this week they arrested 20 Jews that were bringing animals and they were trying to do a sacrifice up on the Temple Mount? The Israeli police arrested 20 zealous Orthodox Jews, you know, the ones that wear the, all those different things they wear and they have the, the um, locks down here and they wear uh, those prayer shawls with the little fringes, you know, all the things that mark them and they have on their yarmulke and all that, those 20 of them, young your age, were bringing sheep and goats, and they were going to kill them and, and make a little offering to God. That's how zealous they are. They're called the Temple Mount Faithful. They've rebuilt all the equipment that's talked about in Exodus. They're not Christians. They're not Messianic Jews either. They just want to go back to the Old Testament thing. Guess what? Daniel sees them in the future doing that in Daniel 9.27. And what he says is that the same people that destroyed the temple the first time, the Romans, that the leader of them is going to allow the, the coming, there's a future Roman emperor coming. That's what, have you ever heard in prophecy a revived Roman empire? That's who he is. That's Daniel 9. You guys have covered Daniel, right? It's near the end of the year. I mean, Daniel 9 is maybe the single most powerful prophetic passage in the whole Bible because it lays out everything all the way to the end. But Daniel saw it. Jesus sees it. In, in Matthew 24, 15, where we started yesterday, Jesus said that, that you're going to see in the holy place the Antichrist standing. What's the holy place? Not own, it's the holy of holies. It's talking about in the very temple, not the outer courtyards, inside. So see, what Antichrist does is he lets the Jews rebuild their temple. And then he goes in and stands and said, and I'm God, worship me. That's very interesting, his, his plan. Uh, Paul saw it. He calls it the temple in 2 Thessalonians 2.4. And now John is actually walking around it and measuring it and everything else here. So the first temple of Solomon, 970-950. The second temple, Herod's uh, enlarging Zerubbabel's 20 B.C. to 26 A.D. Do you remember when Jesus said, destroy this temple, I'll rebuild it in three days? And the people responded, 40 and 6 years this temple was built? Right there it is, 40 and 6 years. 20 B.C. to 26 A.D. is 40 and 6 years, just like Jesus said. The third temple is in Revelation 11. It's during the tribulation. That one gets uh, reconstituted and rebuilt during the millennium into the one we're going to see uh, on Friday. How might the Antichrist solve the global Israel problem? 
because today you couldn't build any temple there. I mean, you can't even get uh, an Israeli official to walk on the Temple Mount without there being a riot. The only way that, I mean, Netanyahu and others will go up there and walk around, and they have to have literally an army with them wearing flak jackets with not just rifles. They have like those M60 things that shoot grenades, and they're like totally in this capsule, this bubble of protection. Why? The Muslims don't want a Jew even to walk on that surface let alone build a temple. But look, look at the architecture of the Temple Mount. On the left there, that's the Al-Aqsa Mosque. That's the second most holy spot next to Mecca for all of Islam. So that's the Al-Aqsa Mosque. What is that built over? It's built over the southern steppes. It's built over the area where the church was born. The Muslims have built all of their major structures all over what we call the old Roman Empire, over famous Christian sites because they, they want to supersede, they want to be above Christianity. That's the goal of Islam. And so Muhammad carefully, strategically, and, and his uh, successors over all these sites. This is where, on the left there, that Al-Aqsa Mosque is where the 3,000 people came to Christ on the day of Pentecost. It's the only place big enough for 3,000 anybody's outside the temple courts to do anything, and it's the grand staircase where Jesus was brought up by Joseph and Mary and Simeon and Anna interrupted him. It's where Paul and everybody else goes up to the temple. It's where Jesus taught all the time on the temple steps. That's the Al-Aqsa Mosque. Then to the right of it, it's just trees. And then look right in the middle. Do you see that gold dome? Everyone knows what that is. That's the Dome of the Rock. That's the third holy spot. And then look, there's a big white area. It looks like a big football field there paved over. And then look to the right of that, there's more trees. So actually, this area is 40 acres. That's huge. A, a 40 acre area that Herod paved and built and it's got underground structures and above it was this, the temple. But today, it has the Dome of the Rock and Al-Aqsa and a lot more room. So probably, by the way, we know where the temple probably was because Josephus, do you remember Josephus, the renegade Jewish commander that was captured by the Romans? They didn't kill him, they hired him. He became the historian for Titus, to, wrote down the destruction of Jerusalem. He wrote down the, the murder of his own people. Josephus Ben-Gurion was an amazing guy. Uh, he said he was standing on the Mount of Olives during the siege of Jerusalem in AD 70, and he was standing on the Mount of Olives, and he said he moved and he looked through the eastern gate, so if your back right door there is the eastern gate, and he went like this as the Roman soldiers were working, and he said he could see the temple through the eastern gate. Well, on this map, do you see uh, on the right it says temple must be lined up with the golden or the eastern gate? that arrow is pointing toward where Josephus looked. So the temple is probably in that kind of uh, turquoise block that says the only area for the future Jewish temple. The only place they'd want it is where it used to be. And by the way, the Dome of the Rock isn't where it used to be. It, it's interesting, it was really to the right there in that, that blank space. So the existing Dome of the Rock, look what else there's room for. I mean, the Antichrist probably allows two structures for the the Muslims, two structures for the Christians, and one structure for the Jews. Very interesting. So there is room, but what could cause him to get everybody to buy into this? Well, we'll see that in about 10, 15 minutes.